Not so long ago, John Youngquist asked Ran, Kevin, and myself to come up with a district-wide vision for blended and personalized learning in APS and to share it with him. Rather than getting the three of us together in a room and developing that vision in order to pass it off as something that the district has already bought into and is ready to implement, we decided that it was more important to frame the conversation as something that we want to do collaboratively in order to build that buy-in and readiness for implementation over time. Based upon that initial session, which you can click on the slide number one, there's a link there that will actually take you to that resource for what we shared with John, he gave us the go-ahead to pull folks together into a working group to help develop the vision and support the implementation of it. And that's what we're doing right now. Whether you joined us for that initial working session or you're watching this video, you are invited to take part in this process. And I want to share a few things with you today, but if we do it right, we are going to fully understand the way in which we will co-create the vision, as well as sort of building the buy-in to come together and provide feedback and to co-develop with schools, with central office, with IT, all of these different stakeholder groups, and that it is co-owned by all of us. With that in mind, I'd like to start with this ratio. The ratio of one to one. It could be a ratio of anything, right? One giraffe to one tree, or something maybe more relevant, one teacher to one student, if you're talking about student ratio. But most commonly, especially when you're talking about vision for blended and personalized learning, you're talking about one student to one device. Now, we're not the first ones to use this ratio, right, to describe these two things. And more accurately, we are not even the first district in the metro area to go down the path of looking at sort of creating this vision using this as a reference point, one to one. If you want to open up the speaker notes, you can click on the settings cog for the presentation. And you can actually open up the speaker notes, and there are four links in there to what other districts in the area are, are starting to work on. There's Boulder Valley, there's St. Vrain, there's Greeley Evans, there's even Denver Public Schools and what they have started to think about as a part of their bond implementation that they just passed. But in each one of those cases, one to one, one student to one device is a reference point. And it has been a reference point for a very long time. Um, really around the world, many folks have used this idea of, well, every student should have a device and they should be using it for learning. But they have stopped at the point of describing the ratio. So you match up the number of kids you have with the number of devices that you have. And if you have one-to-one, -one, then you are a one-to-one -one district. And that is the approach that Los Angeles Unified took when they implemented a $1.3 billion one-to-one -one initiative that mostly, by all accounts, failed because they focused on the ratio of the student and the device rather than supporting either side of that ratio. So what we want to do is focus on both sides, and then we'll talk about how we move forward from just the ratio. If you want to learn more about the Los Angeles Unified experience, there is a link on slide three. If you click again in the center there, it will open up an article to the lessons learned from that particular initiative. But the nation is sort of lousy with examples of districts that have focused on that ratio as the only thing that they care about. And what we want to do is learn from the districts that didn't do that, that actually did focus on both sides of the support and moving it beyond the conversation about ratio. So that's what we want to do now. So let's start by focusing on the learner side of the equation as the device side hops off of the screen. Each one of our learners on the, uh, on the left-hand side of the ratio are different, right? There is one learner, and that is the, the purpose of why we are here. We are focused on supporting that one learner, but we have to understand who those one learners, those many, many, many one learners are. And so we need to look at our demographics. We need to look at the birth year of when our kids were born. Our youngest kids in ECE were born in 2013. 
And our oldest kids, if we go all the way up to 21, were even just born in 1995. But the vast majority of our students were born after 9-11. And we need to look at all of the different components and be really clear about who our learners are and who we need to support. So what I've done is I've linked this particular slide, slide number 15, to our demographics page. Our demographics page, and we did this in our in our face-to-face -face session, pulled out some really important and interesting things. That our one learners on the left-hand side of the ratio, there is a significant proportion that um, receives free and reduced lunch. What does that say about what they have access to? We have a lot of assumptions about what that might mean for their access to technology or their regular access to Wi-Fi and things like that. But it doesn't tell us the whole story. So how do we keep on sort of pulling at that thread? How do we look at our demographics for um, our language learners and understanding what it might mean to use a device in one language versus another? How do we support those students differently? Because these one learners are all different. And how do we look at and understand the one learners? So I'd encourage you to look at the demographics page and to really draw some information and some ideas about what it might take to support that side of the ratio. Now, if we start to look at the other side of the ratio and we push off to the side, our learner side of things, we look at our one device. But it's never one device. Many of us have multiple devices that we are using, as well as many different kinds of devices. What I've done is pulled a report as of this week to explore what are the devices that our students are using, what are the devices that are in our schools, and by the numbers, we are technically a one-to-one -one district, right? There are more devices, in fact, than what we are allotted to uh, for uh, student enrollment. And for me, that's kind of amazing that we're already sort of there in a numbers way. But all of these devices are not being used by students. Many are being used by the adults in our schools. Many of them are even maybe in closets somewhere not being used, or they're very, very old and can't be used for learning or even assessment. And so it's looking at these you know, high numbers, 15,000 Chromebooks or iPads at 6,000 across our district, and how are those being used for learning, and how do we support them? But one of the other things that this particular report, and I encourage you to take a look at this as well, that it doesn't pull out is all of the student devices, the cell phones that come into our schools, or the teacher devices. Teachers have cell phones, or they bring in their personal computers, and those are not captured here. But we are still supporting them with wireless. And if we look at this, actually almost all of, and really the majority of our devices are on the wireless. And how do we look at internet as sort of this absolute essential component, right? That would have to support the right-hand side of that ratio, right? So when we look at this, we need to look at both sides. We need to look at both sides of this ratio, and we need to look at what it means to support the left-hand side here with the learner, and what it means to support the right-hand side. What does it mean to actually support this ratio. Now at the beginning we talked about how do we move beyond the ratio. And I'm going to propose that the way we move beyond the ratio is actually to focus right in the middle. We've asked many questions that we would need to tackle in order to support the one-to-one -one ratio. But the one question we haven't asked is what is between those two singular digits? I believe this is where our significant work and our significant impact is going to be. It is in the interplay between the one student and the one device. It is moving from a ratio to a relationship between those two things. That colon becomes a two. When it becomes an actual word, something very interesting happens. It becomes a statement. Rather than a ratio, it describes the state of the classroom or the school one to one. It's an attitude, a stance, that can be extremely helpful to support our process of developing and implementing a one-to-one -one vision. One student to one device. And it sort of begs to be highlighted that this is something different. It's not a ratio that we are trying for. 
It is a relationship between the one student and the one device, and it begs for us to finish the statement with what we are coming from, right? Now we've got the full picture. We're transitioning from something to something else. We are creating an opportunity to describe these two things and a vision from one student to one device, from one to one. And it kind of becomes a template for our language. Now, in teaching and learning, we've sort of been thinking about from and to for a little while, but it's really important to help us frame our language. What are we going from? What are we going to? What is our current state? What is our future state? And it's different, just like every student is different, every device might be different perhaps, the from and the to might be different at different schools. But let's talk about what it might look like. The reason why I want to go with this sort of frame from one to one is it's not just us doing it. It's also in the National Education Technology Plan where they describe the from as passive use, simply consuming media or completing digitized worksheets and really falling short of the full promise of a one-to-one -one environment to active use, right? So doing all of these different learning activities and uh, experiences that really support and describe what we want to be seeing from and to. This becomes a really important frame for us. So that's why I want to look at how we go from access or sometimes access, right? Many schools do not even have consistent access just yet towards usage or from passive use to active use. Very important to look at from one to one. We also want to look at going from equality to tequity. Equality is six laptops in the back of the room that are across every single classroom. And there are six for everyone. And that's the station that's going there. That's equality. Tequity is using the tools to create equitable outcomes. It is using this technology to accelerate the implementation of our six themes of culturally responsive education. Engagement. How do these tools support relationships, cultural identity, students being vulnerable, asset focus factors. What are their assets to be able to use with these tools and the rigor in the classroom? So going from that equality to tequity. And finally, it's going from the colon to the word to. It is going from the ratio to the relationship or the practice, right? How these interplay with one another, the student and the device. And it's really important, and this came up in our session together, that it is important that we look at the why. Why is it important to go from a ratio to a relationship or a practice? Why is it important to look at how this levels the playing field for us? That just by matching the number of students to the number of devices is not enough. That that thing in the middle is the person, right? <laughs> on either side here, right? It's the person in the middle that actually makes this work and the relationship um, between the student and the, uh, the device. So how do we do that? Well, it starts with us looking at our from, right? Where are we, we right now? Where is sort of our current state? So what I have done is I have pulled all of our fixed asset numbers and actually started to describe all of the different models of one-to-one -one that exist, only in terms of the ratio and then moving us beyond that. So across about one-third of our schools, we have inconsistent one-to-one -one models where non-core classes, meaning electives or a tech class, is the only place where one student and one device meet and that that is the ratio within that uh, space. Ad hoc one-to-one -one is sharing a cart across an entire school and um, sort of you have to check it out and it may be very inconsistent in that way. Or one-to-one -one spaces is really about how um, uh, how a library or a open computer lab becomes uh, the only place and time where students are able to achieve a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, when we move into the consistent one-to-one -one models, we are shifting and talking a little bit more about the relationship between a student and a device. We are talking a little bit more about usage, but let's talk about each one of these. So shared one-to-one -one is like a teacher sharing uh, a cart 
in the morning and in the afternoon, right? So two teachers um, you know, in the literacy block in the morning are using these devices in the literacy block in the afternoon, and they partner, and that's a shared one-to-one -one environment. There are many teachers or some teachers across our district who have a one-to-one -one classroom access. They have uh, actually you know, written a grant for a classroom set of devices, and that stays in their room all the time. Now, that might just be access, or they may have pushed over towards usage. You might have that environment for an entire grade level or a set of grade levels, and they may have access, carts that are dedicated just to that room, or they may have gone all the way over to usage. And then in very few cases across APS, we have one-to-one -one school wide access and then pushing towards usage. Very few over here, and that's okay because we're going from to, and it's important to understand where we are coming from. So this map, and I encourage you really to explore the map to see where your schools are, where you are personally, and look at what it would take to go from where you are Right? Go, talking about the ratio, really trying to match the number of students to the number of devices, and moving beyond that into the space where we can actually talk about the two. So the way in which we're going to do that is actually by capturing both sides of this equation. So in order for us to fully flesh out this vision, we need to do some more capturing of what current state and looking forward to what the future state or the two state is going to be for the relationship between one student and one device. So in order to do that, we want to do some capturing. So using this form, and if you click on the capture both sides uh, part of the presentation, um, that particular slide, so slide 62, you can actually open up this form and it helps us to actually capture what's going on and how students are interacting with a device. And so you can actually upload pictures or uh, videos of what the actual practice is. And what we're going to do in our next session, which is on January 9th, what we're going to do in that session is actually plot out what the from and what the to is and let those practices, those important and sort of rich core practices of where we want to see the relationship between students and devices B, we are going to plot that out as the core of our vision. So I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this, to interact, to provide feedback. Please do fill out that form as many times as you possibly can between now and January 9th, which is not super far away, but gives us enough time to sort of create that frame. It is my sincere hope that together we will be able to create the from one to one vision and that that will be shared and co-owned and co-developed and bought into by our entire community. Thank you.